Yeah, I'm originally from the district of Kokraza. Then uh, I, I am from the region of the, the area which is still backward. We are in the middle of, we have Dotma and uh, Serpanguri, it's a middle of my village, which is uh, North Chimari. Then I am associated with APSU since my college days, since 2000. In the year of 2000 onwards, I am associated from my college days. Mm. So th that's how I went on through uh, actively participating in all the uh, activities of APSU. Then right now I am holding up Assistant General Secretary of Alboros Student Union. It's about uh, around 50 years of uh, struggle of uh, demand for border land. And now the talks with the government is going on. So what, at what stage it is uh, uh, The last talk which was held on 26th of April at New Delhi, it was a political level talk which was uh, called by the government of India. And in the presence of the Home Minister, Rasna Chin and then the Assam CM mm. and from our team it was the movement group uh, NJP Progressive as well as People's Connection Committee for Borderland Movement and APSU. So after that uh, it's the first in BJP government the political level talk has been initiated. So this is uh, something a good sign for us because the issue which has been long pending and then the third phase of movement which was started from 2010 by APSU and then subsequently the ceasefire group of progressive NDFP. They have also participated in the democratic process. So all over, again uh, in 2011 the Joint Action Committee was formed by the NDFP progressive. So this is a um, well effort that uh, we want a concrete solution to the creation of separate state Bodolek. So in the initiative of talks, we want that the government of India should have some pragmatic steps towards solving through dialogue and then taking policy at the government level. The previous government, the Congress was not very responsive for this. Congress had uh, brought up to the level of a bureaucratic level talks and then the last when Sushil Kumar Shinde was the Home Minister, he also had uh, participated once in the talk. So that was uh, the fourth round of talk and then uh, the fifth round got in with the NDA government, new government with the bureaucratic level. Mm -hmm. So that ended with the simply of uh, without any policy on the separate state. I am from plain area so uh, uh, the news about Bodoland yes. or the representation of Bodo world yes. is uh, also by the national media, yes. or they call themselves national. So uh, how do you see media helping you or are they uh, an obstruction to uh, your movement? See, uh, Media one way is uh, helping us a lot, but sometimes when there are some incidents of violence or conflict in the region, then there is a uh, misconception of by some group of media in the sense of understanding the Bodo community. So the Bodo community is well in movement, the local media is well aware of it. So in uprising our issues by the local media, and the media who is uh, very much uh, aware of the issue, it is well and done and it is good for their representation in the media. But sometimes when violence comes or conflict is created by some uh, sort of misgrains or underground movement groups or anything of sort, then the representation sometimes they consider it the whole of the community has to be a militant. But sometimes they fail to mention the organization of sort. But you, what do you mean by local media? Assam or Borderland Even media? Assam also and then uh, outside Assam we consider it mainstream in Indian perspective where mainland India's media group. That's how it is. Here the local media is also uh, dominated by the Assamese upper caste yes. So, yes. Uh, in print as well as uh, uh, digital. Do you see any hope or expectation from them to represent see, some group this community? Of, uh, some, some group of media hmm. in Assam also, although they are at the upper end of the Assamese people in Assam. So some group of media, they are very well uh, conceptualized towards the issue because it's a long pending issue. Assam will have a problem with this movement in rights. Mm -hmm. So it is for them it's a problem but when it is brought into analysis of media, mm -hmm. some group of media place it positively that uh, it's a legitimate issue. So that's how we understand that certain group definitely yes, they don't have that position of acknowledging the situation of the movement. Do you see anyone in uh, leadership position in media like putting a good post in media? Right now, we don't have a good position in media house represented by the Bodo community. Okay. But, uh, <coughs> sorry, there is a, a local media, that's a Bodo newspaper which was uh, solely owned and edited by the Bodo owner. Which one? Uh, it's a Bodosa, Bodosa Daily. 
it's a Bodhisattva Deli from Kokraga. Then we had another one, but uh, Bodhalens Hansri. That's now at the halt. He is not unable to. These are in which language? These are in Bodo language. Bodo language. And another was there launched by the same publication of the Bodoland Sanskrit, which was the Bodoland Guardian. It's a weekly yes. publication, but that also was not so affordable. But our media, in our own vernacular or Bodo media group, there is uh, two or three publications which are very small in number, mm -hmm. and they have uh, still in capacity of uh, printing, they are very poor. So that's how in the main media what exists right now in Assam. We don't have a leader who is there holding some post of editor, chief editor, something like that. The effort that we have been trying and the idea of connecting with the large group of media house, you know, maybe from Delhi, maybe from Mumbai, or maybe in the main media, so-called today the national media. So there we are uh, like, uh, because there are no correspondents sometimes, that is a problem of representing from our side. So they have also the same problem, I think, uh, because uh, mainland India also have upper caste uh, that, editor. That, that, that no Dalits are there, that no is the, yeah, That is one of the criteria and they don't want to invest in artists. Okay. That is one of the ideas. They don't want to invest in artists. They don't want to send their correspondent. They don't want to have a reporter. They don't want to have a media team over here, hmm. branch office or something like that. Because maybe some way they think that this area is smaller and then it's away from India. Certain issues are only for them, not for the whole of India, it's not affected. What is national for them? Their nationalism does not include issues of North East. That is main people. media. The most issues of North East do not get reflected in the so-called today's national media. And even if it will be of Assam? I mean, Assam, Nagaland, Manipur, so is the case of uh, maybe Tripura, mm -hmm. Urnachal, Meghalaya, it's the same. But how long we can complain? What the community can do or what the people can... Uh, uh, our option is only to some uh, uh, direct contacts with some journalist or the responsible person who is like sometimes been sent in the northeast as a correspondent. Mm -hmm. So we had once uh, like one Ratnati Chaudhuri who used to come over all over northeast who is uh, from Tripura now working with NTTV. So sometimes this representation reach when we call and there is a quite ample of opportunities taken place. And what about lawyers, uh, in, like league? In the conflict area, there are there, may, there are many times you need uh, legal support. Like communities need who are living in border areas, uh, or they need legal support because they don't have money to go to court. So, do you? How do you help uh, them uh, legally? Right now, most of the legal assistance by our lawyers or our team of lawyers. Particularly, we are unable to uh, give direct help to those who need of legal aid. But uh, we sometimes assist in terms of special cases which ever comes uh, in need of help. And then, uh, for example, if there are some serious cases of uh, uh, like witch hunting or some cases of rape or sexual harassment, so those cases sometimes we particularly uh, try to handle through our lawyers who respectively represent in the court. So but it is a, there are many areas which are under Afspar huh? and which place we went with yes. this place near Bhutan borders. Yes, 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 so there Santhal and uh, uh, both are living. They, sometimes there is a problem that they pick up anyone and then they land up in jail for three months. Yes. After three months they are released and they are not uh, like said what are the reason for their arrest. So how can Apsu or because Apsu is present in many places. How do you think you can reach to them and support? First of all, uh, we have very few lawyers. Mm -hmm. And then uh, assisting those uh, persons who are illegally picked up or arrested or detained. So this is a human rights perspective, uh, lawyering. Mm -hmm. And then in that sense, th there is an APSPA which is in place in some areas of Assam and Borderland region. So there are many cases which goes on and people language in the jail. So at that time, there are very few border lawyers whom we cannot even name till today. There is no organization who exists. And as an APSU, we sometimes uh, <coughs> genuinely identify certain people who are very innocent and then there are uh, ready lawyers to help. We no. recommend to them. So this is how we do, but we particularly are uh, lacking lawyers and we ourselves uh, cannot uh, do that legal work where there are people are also very less aware of 
legal issues. So, those so you need to build, yeah. build those uh, team of lawyers, team of lawyers from right. Bodo community itself yes, yes. and uh, yeah. provide legal aid or yeah. how so to do this. We are like uh, trying to collect but those maximum areas wherever the region you have visited or the backward regions where even the quality of education is so poor. Mm -hmm. Having a lawyer is also uh, that difficult. It's a luxury now. Luxury. And it is uh, around 50 years and I today I saw in the stage there were hardly any uh, women leaders. Like it was full of only men, men leaders from other region also, like people from Vidarbha. It is normal, usually the, most of the movements are, I see they are very much male dominated. So how do you relate it uh, here? Like uh, Our Bodhavan movement, uh, right now as you have seen, practically yes, there are no women leaders that we agree. But, uh, at times, the first base of movement, there was a women organization which uh, represented the uh, leadership of women, that was All Bodo Women Welfare Federation. Right now, we don't have such a group to support this movement. But we have some leaders, women leaders, who are with us and sometimes they are unable to attend meetings because of the uh, family issues or something where they are engaged to some teaching profession or different professions. So, particularly representing by an organization or being part of this organization, the leadership of NJMB also do not have women leadership. We do have women leadership, which are uh, secretaries, we have secretary level leadership, where we have uh, uh, at par with the uh, entire movement group, the representation comes mostly like, as you agree, with the male domination. Mm -hmm. So the entire movement, there is a good number of women leadership who mostly work at the grassroots. So that is what we have done. But, uh, like, uh, do you think it is also connected to the, like, uh, justice system or anywhere, there are many places there, there is patriarchy. But somehow we have a so-called idea of tribal that some people think are they are very modern and they have gender justice mode, gender equality mode. So do you think that somewhere down the line in border culture, uh, women are not given equal opportunity or there is need to do more? Uh, among Bodos, mm -hmm. family or society level or the level of uh, family life, it's okay. The status is okay with men and women. However, the political process, political movements or social movements, the women groups are there with issue-based movements sometimes. But mainly this political level movement where the representation is very low still among from the Bodo communities, still it is a male domination of politics. Mm -hmm. There is uh, council politics also has no main representation mm -hmm. and uh, even the organization leaders whom uh, right now the heading the movements we have very less women leaders who are associated with the movement. Mm -hmm. So so what can be done about it? They, we are trying to, we are already initiating the process because mm -hmm. last we had a separate movement by the women. Okay. So that's our uh, initiative by the women leadership. And again we have uh, to, we are going to launch another phase of movement which will be completely headed, will be led by women and headed by women, participated by women. Okay. And then uh, we are going to have a send a delegation on issue of Bodoland to Delhi. A group of women will be representing on the issue. So it is completely on the leadership. We are trying to collect a few uh, leadership of women, um, women leaders from our region. They are interested and they are already uniting each other. That is how the new initiative is coming up. So this demand of state, uh, Suppose uh, there is borderline tomorrow, and so what will be the constitution of uh, borderline? What what will happen to Santhal, Urao, Muslims in this region? Uh, what will be the provisions for them? Like they are already here. See, uh, whichever state in India, hmm. and it's an Indian diversity, it's hmm. our diversity, and say it may be a borderline. But every individual from different communities will have equal rights. So that's how we are fighting for the depri deprivation of rights for all the communities. Actually, uh, we have M number of, good number of uh, Santals, then some Orang, Mundas, who are still in the Chikata or in the forest region. So we all are the uh, same, we are deprived. 
so they will have that political opportunity of uh, separate governance uh, within the Borderland Borderland will be a separate state. So we have will have an opportunity to look forward for all round development of the older communities. So, but if you see the um, what happened in Chhattisgarh, Uttarakhand, Jharkhand, like people, today leaders were giving example of Tel Telangana also. So do, how do you see the development happen after the state is formed? Like see, there is huge level of corruption among from the local people itself. Like Shibu Soren was arrested there. In Uttarakhand, the situation is terrible. Today. At all level huh. of governance or maybe of business or maybe of any corporate sector, the corruption is a way of doing business. Hmm. So that's how we can analyze. Okay. Other than that, it is up to the vision of the government or the people who are leading the state, hmm. the politics. It is up to them how, how, why to, how to change and how to minimize this level of corruption. Hmm. So it is still... Uh, so you are asking for the same system? Uh, no. We will have the vision of... Uh, trying to end corruption and we have that leadership who are always hoping for equal justice to all and that we are hoping that there will be equal development and ablement without corruption so that is so when the demand is for the state why not lay out the policy before what will be uh, like policy by the uh, absu like all i hear is uh, demand for state yes but what after that? Uh, so after that is like uh, we are already internally have all the uh, uh, discussions with various groups of organizations, mm. community leaders. Mm. So this initiative is there. So the same question will uh, has been asked by these groups huh. that if in future Portland is the reality, then what will be the political strategy, mm. the party strategy, the rules strategy, at least some. Uh, laws which are going to be newly initiated by the new government or the new state. So what were the, the share of benefit? Uh, like the criticism of few people I have heard that okay now Absu is leading the movement now all of them will get the power and it will be the similar thing uh, like when Bodoland will form Absu leaders will be at the top and uh, they will uh, be in the power and everybody else will be like that only? That I don't think so. Because there is an uh, established political party in the region. Those will be BPF, those will be Congress, those will be BJP. It's not we who are going to have it. It's a democracy. People will have their own right of their own wish, whom to vote, which party to come into power, to bring into power. Mm. It's not we who cannot say. Absolute, absolute volunteers right now cannot say that the power will own our hand. Because you see the last elections, the council election, EPSU cannot take that upper hand of uh, capturing power with any force. We are defeated. And uh, the Lok Sabha election, it's because of our issue we have participated. And there we are defeated. Mm -hmm. So that today if people have that uh, capacity of their wish and their participation in democracy in the electoral process where they have the complete right to choose their leader, mm -hmm. that is how the option is. We are open for the democratic process. So that idea is there that yes, party representations, not absolute representations. So our idea is only to have that justice towards governing our own area and mainly the language, culture and tradition of this uh, rural community who are largely... So uh, presently you don't think it is uh, being preserved? Like uh, power from Guwahati is too much uh, or what, what is happening now? Why? Now the original question, why? Mm -hmm. What will change? Like why the demand for the state? See. What is happening under the present Assam? Yeah. Government. The best example right now, till uh, today we have, is uh, our Boro Mediums schools uh, who are supplied textbook by Assam government, printed by Assam government, and today there is a, education is fundamental right. Uh, and then we have a right to education law. Then the textbooks, uniform, everything has to be supplied by the state. Uh, and today our schools don't get textbooks, that Boro Medium textbooks. Uh, our Boro Medium schools don't have teachers, which should, which should be appointed by the state government. And wherever they have appointed, they have sent uh, different medium teachers who are Assamese medium, who are uh, Hindi medium or something like that to Boro medium. So they are imposing oh, yes. Assamese language? They are trying to impose Assamese language and okay. it is not that, that how can a Boro medium student uh, understand, how can an Assamese medium teacher teach in the Boro medium institution? Okay. So these are the basic questions and these are the reason that if our education system has to survive, hmm. if we have to grow with a mother tongue education, then there has to be our own system of governance which has to prove that yes, we can do. And the same is with the Assamese in the region, in our region. 
So, uh, along with the demand for the state, why not? Uh, because uh, if you if APSU uh, and other organization can organize a lot of people from the villages, all the borders from different districts, why not they can have their own educational institute and uh, why uh, parallelly why not that can also happen? See, this uh, initiative of people for school. Mm -hmm is parallelly practiced in Assam since many years. Mm -hmm. That's why we have three categories of schools. Mm -hmm. One category is government school, the other is private school, mm -hmm. the other was called venture schools. So this venture school has become a threat to Assam, which has brought down the quality of education, where we will see mm -hmm. that the venture school means the community ventures the school. They open the school, then they get recognition from DO, IS, school inspectors, everybody recognizes it, and then they are told to open and the government will take over after some years. So this process went on since 30 years back. But Assam government has not adopted the policy of uh, adopting the schools as a government schools. So last initiative was done in 2011 mm. and that law provincialization is struck down because it is against the right to education law. And now it's a new provincialization law which has come up in Assam. So all this process where, as you believe, yes, community can establish schools. There are community established schools, you go there, mm -hmm. they're still waiting for teachers, they're still waiting for infrastructure board, where government doesn't send a penny. But the community, how long will it sustain? Then again, why, uh, how long can it sustain? But there are many Bodo uh, community who have like uh, good, um, good, quant um, uh, they have land. Okay. And they have land, they have uh, enough money. It's uh, I have met, no, it's just one or two day experience, but I'm just sharing that they have uh, land. Why not they can arrange for a teacher from their own community? See, for example, huh. community management, EPSU once last uh, two years before, when schools are without teacher, we have collected some educated guys from the local areas and kept us a teacher with a minimum pay of 1500 or 2000 in a month. Hmm. This was our initiative. The villagers, right now, where there are no teachers, they pay the teacher and they keep them. And this is the initiative. But how do you expect? We can't expect a rich person or a person who is having land. The land is another issue where the people who are having large areas of land, still today, the areas of land are not given the right of land. The land holding right is, uh, in Assam we have a settlement right, we have a land holders right inherited right but the settlement right is not given yet in the forest areas also because of that the government has not uh, provincialized or the school are not being converted to government schools that is another oh, they are saying it is illegal or uh, how can they say it is illegal because they did not implement the forest dwellers right, right which was in 2000 so the if suppose a community start a school then government will not recognize it they will there say are many schools, yes. They already allowed to establish oh. nine and some established in 1980s, some okay. established in 1990s. But till today, the government is reluctant of provincialising those schools. So there are people who are able enough. They have established some private schools, and all those are in some semi-urban or some yeah. pocket areas where there are ample opportunities of people who have that opportunity of having to private schools. Yeah. But mostly the tribal areas of our backward areas where Bodo tribals are still attached to the Bodo. There are this exchange of uh, cultivation where hmm. minimum Bodo families are there who cannot sustain, they have large number of land but the family members, they have uh, nuclear families where they have gone away. Definitely, what central Muslims are also cultivating Bodo's land. Hmm. So there are uh, many exchange of cultivation or share of land where they enjoy the interest. That is how people sustain. It is threatening community. for the local community, Bodo community, or how do you see it? Like because in some places now there are like few Bodos and they are surrounded by Santals and Muslims. Right now, if you see back uh, relating to some conflict areas, we have that uh, tribal bell and blob in Assam, hmm. which uh, some parts, mostly in Udalguri also, are encroached and are being already gone to the non tribals who are not at all eligible for the right of land over hmm. those areas. The government has the right to evict them. Get the notice. The simple notice is enough to evict them. When once they are in tribal belt and block, Rasam has not done yet. So this has engulfed the encroachment in the tribal belt and block. 
where today you will find the Bodos are being majority, all the other tribals who are there are minority yeah. in terms of population. But uh, there are non tribals who have already engulfed into the areas of uh, tribals. So that's why you find that there are some, uh, uh, when there is a problem with land, so there is an issue of land which comes into question and then there is a feud among the community. So these are that Boro and Santal and Muslim. Everybody is uh, living immemorial times together, mm. most of the areas. But some areas, since last uh, 10 years or 15 years, there are some kind of uh, encroachments or new takeaway of lands or settlement over the land. So this happens, but these are the threats that government should have uh, concrete policy in order to protect those demarcated tribal belt and block, which is a law in the Assam so land and Do you think government is doing uh, on purpose? They are Making the Bodo minority in their own... Not only Bodo, the other tribal groups also, okay. other tribals also in Assam, because mm -hmm. they are least interested on the issue of protecting land. Because, yes, they will benefit if those populous people come and settle there. Mm -hmm. And it is because land of Bodos or land of other tribes. Mm -hmm. so that's why it's minimum interest is given. Okay, just when people think are a Bodo land, they are demanding Bodo land. Now they are demanding car belong. So now they are demanding uh, one more land. So people talk like in very loose manner about this demand of a state. What do you say to them? See, some may be ignorant about the issue. Mm -hmm. Some may not know the history of why this movement has happened. Mm -hmm. Some may not know what is the consequence of some movement and what the consequence of some effort. So why would this movement Bodolan has started? And why Karbi movement is, yes, it's not before us, but it is post-independence, the Karbi has been that status of uh, earliest Sikh schedule status in the hill, which they have attained soon after Meghalaya. So this is how uh, the concept of people who don't have that idea of movement or why the people are suffering, mm -hmm. why there is a uh, deprivation, why there is an oppression in this region. So they don't identify the issues of oppression, suppression within the region of proposed Bodolan area, where we are still struggling to live with the identity of uh, simple education where people have to be educated where we are trying hard to signify that yes Bodo is a community or a tribe we have its own language culture everything which doesn't get a representation in the world so if we have a separate state then we will have that representation the other communities also will have that equal representation like Santals in Assam they will not get representation until and unless there is some area where they have that conserved identity along with the Bodos or along with other communities. So this is the idea that uh, people will be ignorant about if they don't come to understand the real fact of why we need Bodo. This present uh, BJP government, we have a lot of cut in education, in higher education. Mm -hmm. Now, since you are from TIS, TIS alumni, uh, this year to around 12 people are selected for uh, from Bodo community yes. to TIS. Yes. But now TIS has announced that SC, ST, OBC scholarship will be cut fully. So, what do you think, uh, how this, how these people will, uh, no. how Bo Bo people from Bodo community will go study there and this larger politics of higher education where they are cutting the fund of uh, universities, uh, central universities especially where uh, there is reservation and which leads to diversity in the campus. So first of all, Government of India's policy of cutting the fund sanctions to the higher institutions, higher education universities had led to this situation that uh, once they create some fund for the weaker section like SC, ST and OBCs, so those funds are now cut by the universities. But for instance, the Government of India scholarship cannot be deprived. Government of India scholarship is always there. So the benefit for the tribals in the university like this also, the GUI scholarship is always there. So far as I understand, the student aid which is being created by the university itself, by Tata Institute of Social Sciences, so that is one example that they have curtailed the student aid fund which supposed to be benefiting more students who are coming from uh, tribal background, who are coming from SC, ST background, who need support. So some, they are uh, having degrees, we have, they have already completed the GUI scholarship tenure. 
So they will not be able to undergo GY scholarship and they want to go for higher education. But so if government has given that policy of uh, depriving the weaker section, so definitely the universities are also trying to take up that policy in order to sustain their uh, financial uh, benefit of sustaining the uh, university. So that is how it is affecting all round. That GY scholarship should not be cut. If it is by this, then it's a very uh, bad example for the Social Sciences Institute, which has a landmark uh, uh, position in India and the world, which has shown that the opportunity of higher education is equal for all. So that was the idea. So we should have that, uh, the university should um, continue such initiative that there must be opportunity for the underprivileged who are as far getting the opportunity to study in higher education institution which gives a degree of importance to the community or the people of India to understand.